At times, we all feel lost in search of something more. This is Christina Dam, and this is the Liberate the Podcast, a podcast designed to help inspire and guide you forward through everything spirituality, creativity, art, and just giving you a sense of empowerment so that you can be powerful, be magical, and be free. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Liberate the Podcast. Today, we are welcoming Nicholas Corderoni, and he is an ordained Taoist priest. And we're going to be talking about Taoism and uh, Taoist mysticism and really about how it is a sacred science and so much more. Now, he teaches classes and workshops and stuff like that, and we're going to be hosting one here at Liberate, and probably anytime you see this, hopefully we'll keep on having him back quarterly or so. Um, but Nicholas, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for being here today. Yes, of course. My pleasure. Oh, so this is this <laughs> is great. This is a very um, interesting topic that we can take it into so sure, many different of directions. Course, of course. Um, yep. But I, I like to start with understanding how you got into it. You know, course, so Taoism, yeah. Corderoni. I'm hearing Nicholas yeah, Corderoni. How, how did this? How did I, that happen? I'm hearing Italian, <laughs> and now yeah. you know studying Eastern <laughs> principles. You know, these two worlds normally don't no, clash, right, but I right. mean, now anything goes. But yes. how did that happen? <laughs> oh yeah. So when I was very young, as early as I can remember, I. I experienced a lot of supernatural phenomenon. Okay. And I, being Italian, I was raised uh, Roman Catholic. Mm -hmm. I grew, I'm from the East Coast. I grew up in Boston. Okay. And uh, so, uh, long story short, uh, what I was experiencing didn't seem to quite line up with what I was presented with, you know, going mm -hmm. to church on Sundays. It wasn't talked about with my family and stuff like that. So... Uh, yeah, when I was very young, I, uh, I started to have supernatural experiences, basically hearing things, seeing things, feeling things, just trying to get through each night. And I couldn't exactly. And, and, and how old were you when you were having oh, this God. happen? Oh, I mean, God. I mean, what's your, one of your earliest memories? Oh, God, like just uh, five years old, four years old. Okay, so yeah. so you were a little tuck, oh, you God. know, like running yeah. around and, yep. and, and, and being like, I'm hearing and seeing things. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. Um, and the, the, the worst, I hate to say this, but the worst part about it is because I, I was scared because I didn't understand what was going on. Yeah. Obviously. And I didn't have the, I was, it was, it was hard to connect with my family about it, you know, um, because I, I was afraid of the ridicule. Uh, mm -hmm. I had trouble just expressing it because nobody else was around me was experiencing that. Okay. Family and friends. So it was a very private thing. And I felt as though early on, you know, if I can just keep my... Because I was kind of skeptical of my own experience. Yeah. Because right. I didn't understand what was going on. Well, and then I didn't know if there was something wrong with me. And or, you share it with somebody and right. then they tell you, no, that's not the case. Or nobody else has these experiences. Right. And so what do you do? You right. start to create doubt. Exactly. And of did course. you shut it off at any point? You know, like a lot of people no, like... I, hear, I couldn't if I wanted to. I okay, couldn't so, help so, it. So, so it, it was something I thought that about it, that. That was a nice idea, but it wouldn't it wouldn't let me, so to speak. Huh. Um, but basically, every night was just like, here we go again. It just came to the point where I remember I had this small TV in my bedroom, um, and that was like a lifesaver, as weird as that sounds, because I would have to keep the TV on, almost provide like a white noise, mm -hmm. so I wouldn't focus on what's around me, because it was so distracting and so powerful it's like as soon as those lights go on and i go into that state it's just like poof. it's wow. like a whole new world opens and it's like oh god i just really need to go to sleep i don't know what's going on but i just want to go to sleep so the tv uh late night show <laughs> you know would, would be great because it would just keep that uh i guess you'd say my brain activity my my cerebral cortex <laughs> technical term active and yeah. ra be able to rationalize what's going on a little bit. So this way I could kind of, it would be easier to fall to sleep. Okay, so you, you had it mostly like when you were starting to go to sleep at night. So you would enter into that more like Oh yeah, state because state, it's like when like, I would go into sleep, it was basically going to a state of meditation okay. for me. So it was just like that. It was like instant. But during the day you could kind of, because you were always distracted, with something yeah, yeah. that your focus could tune out everything yeah, else. Yeah, because being a normal kid, quote unquote, <laughs> um, <laughs> you, you know, 
doing all the other activities that everybody else is doing, you know, keeps you preoccupied. Mm -hmm. But of course, when I had moments to myself, I'd pick up on things. But, you know, but then I'd question, it's like, what am I, what's going on? Am I hearing things? Am I, you know, and, and not, you know, having, share, ha having friends that wouldn't have the same experience. Yeah. You know, it's not like we could talk about that. We're talking about, you know, kids at that age, we're obviously talking about video games and playing sports and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, we're talk talking about, about seeing spirits and, you know, no, having no, life. No. And, I, and, and the ridicule and the, and it wasn't until, so when I got to about the eighth grade okay. is when I started to be like, okay, I got mature enough to be like, I want to learn, start to navigate what's going on, study. Mm. So I started to pick up on just simple books on uh, supernatural and uh, so you go like the library and yeah you'd be the like, library and just you'd be like um, this and be and, something you know and I'd see a psychic once in a while like on TV you know the shows and okay it's like okay I can I'm picking up on what they're putting down but I I remember a friend of mine when I was in eighth grade his brother um, he says hey you got to check this book out and he. He had a book on on Taoism, mm. um, and I was like, I don't know what Taoism is. You know, I knew it was this Eastern philosophy thing. But long story short, with that, I was in eighth grade, and when I started reading it, it everything made sense to me. Interesting. And then I was like, that doesn't make. It was, was kind of weird, because I was like, this is incredible. This is amazing. Blah blah. And then I'd go, hey, doing my French, dude, you gotta check this out. Blah 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 blah. And they're just like, oh, okay, yeah. It was such like over the head and I'm like what I like you don't get it you don't see it they got it but they didn't get it to the the depth of what I understood I think yeah well I mean you yeah. were I mean having those experiences I mean that's like I don't know uh 12th grader trying to say something to a seventh grader right, right. you know like right. and so like even though you were in eighth grade with these other other kids you know yeah. like your level of the world and the way that you had to think about what was going on yeah. force your whole kind of perception about life yep. to a far more mature level than yeah, where yeah. they're at you oh, know yeah. you know so yeah. there's like showing showing the book to a kindergartner and being exactly. like how do you, you and know it was frustrating to me because i guess the only way one way i look at it it's like you know one of these kids that i'm not saying I'm a prodigy or anything like but you know some of these kids that can do math high levels of math at an early age and it's just like yeah you know, no, but that's, that's what how it you, felt to me. No, that's what you were getting, you know? And, and, and that's that's the only way I could relate where, like, I could understand it at such a profound, deep level that I could talk to. And eventually I did. I was talking to people t twice, three times my age. Yeah. Having adult conversations with them. And I'm, like, in high school. Yeah. I, eventually in high school. Yeah. In eighth grade and high school. And then, but, yeah, it, it just took off from there. Then I started reading all these classics. That was mm. classics. And I'm in high school. So, okay, eighth grade transition to high school. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and ninth grade's high school for most people. Right, you right. Know? So, I mean, it's right there. <laughs> so, I am uh, I remember, too, it would be funny because I should be, in my study periods in school, I should be studying my history and, you know, math science, whatever it is. But I'm st I'm literally reading that was classics. <laughs> and it's the weirdest thing. To me, it made perfect sense. It was like, what do what are you reading? What are you reading? It's like, no, this is cool. But... Because it, it just spoke to me so It gave you the profoundly. answers you were seeking. And yeah. And I was just blown away for it. But at the same time, too, it, everything was still abstract. Because though it created a picture for me, I still wasn't connecting my personal experience with what I was studying. So it was more, I guess you would say it was more of like an intellectual thing. Yeah. And an emotional release. Mm-hmm. So eventually, it's like, okay, I got I to gotta get closer and closer. So by the time I got to college, I studied music. I went to Berklee College of Music okay. in Boston. And at that point, I started to study more and more. And it's like, okay, I got to stop studying. And I got to stop being so heady about this and really have more of an experience because this is getting ridiculous. Yeah. So by the age of 21, 22, around then, uh, I started to get books on, you know, meditation practices and uh, various techniques. And then it was just like, boom. It was like turning on a light switch. Yeah. And I was like, well, why didn't I do this years ago? But obviously I was younger 
And well, the right um, time for you, you know? Right. So, and that just, boom, and it just everything escalated. So from that point, I started to like, I tried to get my hands on everything I could. Uh, Taoist, even some Buddhist stuff, but predominantly Taoist. I was just so, it was almost like I knew I had some connection in a past life. Yeah. I was a Taoist at something, at some point. <laughs> some point. Um, because it just made perfect sense to me and I felt such a connection to it. Yeah. Um, and then I would just study meditation techniques, Qigong exercises, uh, Tai Chi. And then later on in my 20s, I started dabbling into martial arts. And, and basically throughout my whole 20s, I'm feeling it all out Yeah. and experiencing it. But then I would just have profound experiences with the techniques I would be having. So I'd be practicing. So I'd be doing like a Qigong exercise. Qigong is an internal exercise. Yeah. Uh, moving meditation, if you would. Um, and on one level, you're, it can be a very subtle, energetical, oh, this is nice and relaxing and soothing, good. But I was having supernatural experiences through that, through mm. basic Qigong exercises, which was not normal. Yeah. Even for, you know, people doing that stuff. So I was able to take basic mundane I won't say mundane, but basic type of exercises and having profound experiences. And so when you say profound, having like a very, you know, ex intense energy, intensity. Energy, uh, but also supernatural, okay. like connecting with spirit. Okay. And so it would, it would spirit it, entity it, as well, it, too. It would put you into that space where it was just like the veil would be completely lifted. Completely gone. And there is a lot of... <laughs> there is things programmed for lack of better words in a lot of spiritual traditions particularly in the Taoist tradition where they will put stuff out to the general public mm -hmm. but it's almost like they put little seeds in there so for people that have a skill set or have that talent it'll manifest yeah so they do but that. But people that don't, that it'll they'll just be like They'll just do like bypass a, it. Yeah. But they'll put it, and they won't mention it. Yeah. But they'll put it there. So when you have a profound experience, eventually it's going to lead you to grow and to explore and to find the master, so to speak, mm. the teachers. And then eventually you find them because they designed it that way. Yeah. Does that make sense? Of course. They literally designed it that way. And, uh, and that, that basically, that did happen. And I, I moved to California in the end of 2008, 2009. And I came across um, Dr. Jerry Allen Johnson. Okay, I'm um, not sure who that is. Okay. Um, basically, he, master, <laughs> a Taoist master in, 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 in Taoist mysticism, religion, uh, martial arts, a Bagua system mm -hmm. uh, martial arts um and he 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 was had a big part in bringing Taoism over to the united states okay and on the west coast uh predominantly and yeah he he did an incredible job through all his material in his mm -hmm. classes of basically providing a system uh taking stuff that's very secret and very closed off Mm -hmm. in the Chinese, in China, and uh -huh. Eastern culture, and being able to have access to that and be able to translate and create a whole system yeah. for, for us people over here. And make it digestible. Oh, yeah. And it was very controversial <clears throat> because traditionally that's not the way that the Chinese yeah. do it. They are, they're very secretive. It's very lineage-based, mm -hmm. which is something that I am much a part of, but also I carry on. But I'm not <laughs> – so the point where it's like, you know, just because the way that things have been the way yeah. they've been doesn't mean that they have to be that way now. now and you, you know. see that actually with a lot of – I don't know if it's maybe the more globalization or access to information, yeah. but it's also, I think, the, a timing because, I mean, if these, these masters and higher disciples for different traditions – have designed, you know, their lineages yep. in a way that, you know, for a long time, yeah. you know, 
it was secretive. It was these secret societies. It yep. was this induction or indoctrination into it or, you know, passed down through bloodlines or whatever the case may be. But then it starts to be, you know, more open across the board where it's like more people need the access to, you know, this this inner awakening it, it, and, or something like that. At yeah, least I, I, I see that across like so many different yeah, disciplines. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a good thing. It really is. Um, but I would say, too, it's because it's kind of a natural evolution yeah. of the human yeah. being, well, yeah, the no. human con collective consciousness, which is a great thing. Um, but, you know, there's a, it is in Taoism, there's a polarity to everything. Mm -hmm. So just when everything is just like, hey, you know, take it, as good as, as liberating as it is, it also you have to be careful because anybody can just grab it and you've got to be careful to protect it and you keep it pure and keep it whole. Yeah. So there's this responsibility that mm -hmm. comes along. So as much as it is open and accessible as it is now um, to learn about it and study about it, we have to be as cautious and very uh, aware of what's going on and who's involved. Yeah. Because we want to keep that essence. We want to keep that purity. Mm -hmm. And uh, traditionally, that's half the reason why they always did it. Yeah. To keep that purity, to keep that, that, that. Otherwise, it's like gone. It would never exist for thousands of years. It yeah. was the beginning of time. It wouldn't. Yeah. There's no way. Um, because this stuff traditionally was only passed on through either if you're very wealthy, like royalty, Mm -hmm. um, very high class, or if you're in clergy. So if you if you were a monk, you were a priest, a priestess, mm -hmm. a nun. Other than that, it was very, very uh, top secret. Yeah. They would not allow it. Um, but yeah, the world has changed. It's, it's more accessible. It's more out there in the open. But still, those traditions do exist. Um, I would say that with my tradition, <laughs> with what I, with with my practice and with my students, but but it's there. It's not like some secret in, in a bad way, in a negative way, like, mm -hmm. oh, you, I'm better than you, or, you, you know, I can't tell you this. Yeah. No, it's just that, you know, it's the same reason why we have doors and we have locks on our doors. Yeah. You know, it, that's the only reason why. And just like you were saying before, with the planting of the seeds, there's yeah. Certain levels of where you have to be in your right. energetic, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual exactly. like discipline in order exactly. for that. You know, you take a seed, you take an apple seed, and you put it on a, a piece of wood. It's not going to grow. You put it on a piece of, uh, you know, cement. It's not going to grow. You put it in, you know, top surface of some leaves. Not probably going to grow. But you plant it at the right space with the right soil, mm. and it gets water, and all of its needs are met. It's going to blossom, right? And there, and the. the and you're going to learn that from a teacher. Yeah. From someone who's been there, done that, has the knowledge, has the wisdom, has the experience. Well, what um, I'm saying with that is even if a, a whole bunch of apple seeds are thrown out in these books or in these teachings or, this, you know, it doesn't mean it has to be the right conditions for it to sprout, you know? Right, right. So it's out there. The information's accessible, accessible, but accessible. I'm saying right. But without the proper toolage instruction and care and father, fatherly, motherly coaching, however you want to, you can be, it can be very dangerous and very harmful to you and to other people. Because you're playing with stuff that's incredibly potent that is affecting the destiny and the reality of you, yourself, you, you other people, the world, etc. You know, it can be very yeah. dangerous. And also, too, that's another reason why they they kept it very uh, protected. But there's a polarity to that, mm -hmm. is that because when you're dealing with energy, the rules of society and right and wrongs don't really exist. doesn't mm -hmm. really exist. That's more of a man-made creation. In nature, universe, the, the nature of the universe just provides. Yeah. So no matter what your intention is, good or bad, you get access to stuff. Okay. You can do some serious harm. So there were a lot of uh, bad Taoists back in the day. Yeah. Because they were, they were, um, well, I feel like the, any, sorcerer, the yeah. bad sorcerer. Well, I mean, anything you know? that has power to it, it's going to 
attract people yeah. that are wanting Seeking to do gold power. and yeah. people that are wanting to use it in ways that, yeah. you know. So, so Taoists were kind of, I, I joke with people, it's like, to give them perspective, it's kind of like, traditionally, think of like Gandalf in Lord of the Rings. Okay. There was a person that you either like adored him, like, oh, he's great, or you were like, I'm deathly afraid of him. Because he was the wandering guy that would go around from village to village that could, you know, he could help you and protect you, or he had the power to literally kill you, mm -hmm. you know? And there were Taoists for hire. They're kind of like bounty hunters in a way. Yeah. That would go to village to village and be like, this guy's like, hey, my neighbor over here, he's taking all my crops and he's taking my, my animals and he's causing harm and I'm going to get sick. Yeah. And my family's not going to get sick. You know, we're in trouble. Mm -hmm. So they would go to the Taoist and he would perform his ritual and ceremony and magic um, and take care of it. And it would work. Yeah. And that was except this is this is for thousands of years. It's ingrained in, Chi in Chinese history. You just Chinese history is Taoism, more or less, you know. Uh. Yeah. And so yeah. if we if we look at that, so then when you were, you know, to finish your 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 kind of story of how you got to now. Mm. So in your 20s, you really like dove in. You found your teacher here mm. and then you decided that, you know, I want to take this even further. Yes. And, and you continued. So from your early 20s, it was just a nonstop path for you to continue to yeah, study. Just evolve, and then the, yeah. OK. <laughs> made all the sense in the world. That's amazing. To me, at least. <laughs> and, you know, since we haven't really defined it yet for mm. those that are watching, I mean, people have heard of Taoism and Taoist uh, ways and, you know, but just like maybe they've heard of Buddhism or, sure. you know, other types of, uh, you know, Tantra or other types of traditions. Sure. And sometimes there's a, not a, a very clear understanding oh, of yeah. the actual, like, what are we talking about? Right. <laughs> you know, it's funny with Taoism because it specifically with Taoism, there's a lot of confusion. Um, because a lot of people just simply don't understand it. They yeah. don't understand because it's very kind of uh, contradictory in a way, but that's the nature of the Tao. It's like, there's no right or wrong. Mm -hmm. There's just, there's, it's like Star Wars, so the Star Wars philosophy, the Jedi mentality. It's the yeah. same thing, basically, yeah. is that there's the universe and there's just different energies and you either harmonize with that energy or you don't. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, it's basically like swimming upstream. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense to understand the flow of how things are moving so you can create harmony within your own life and then the, for, you know, the life that you exist with other people that you're sharing it with. Okay. So uh, another example would be like, um, I like to say, tell people, it's like, imagine the, the ocean is like the sea of life. Mm -hmm. you're a boat mm -hmm. okay now imagine if you're just on that boat and you have no compass you have no destination you have no direction you don't know how to drive the boat what's going to happen eventually you're not it's not going to be too long before the ocean will just will do what it wants with you yeah so you need to have direction you need to have purpose you need to understand your boat being you yeah you need to understand where you're going where do you want to go where do you want this boat to take you yeah. Um, how are you going to get there in terms of speed? Uh, all these factors come yeah. about. But if you disrespect the water, you don't pay attention to a storm that's coming with the huge waves and, and, and so forth. You're the, it's going to swallow you. So mm. you have to have that respect. Otherwise, it will consume you and kill you. Mm. So you have to learn to harmonize and understand your surroundings, understand yourself so you can adapt. Okay. And through that, you'll be able to navigate through the sea of life, get to where you want to go, hopefully enjoy the process mm -hmm. and make your peace, you know? Okay. So if I had to s summarize it, you'd say that it's a, it's a philosophy and tool set and, and you know, that would help you understand yourself and navigate and understand what's around you so exactly. that you can navigate through life at a more, you know, 
harmonized way. Exactly. So that's on the basic fundamental level. Yes. So if you take that and you add a lot more depth to it, then you're going beyond just the three three uh, dimensional five sensory mode. Mm -hmm. And so, okay, so the sea of life is this all powerful, mysterious thing, but not just from a literal, even scientific perspective, but yeah. from a supernatural and understanding, respecting that's a lot more behind that. Yeah. So there's different levels that give life to the 3D world. Mm -hmm. And that's understanding the other levels, the other literal other dimensions or realms that mm -hmm. exist that affect our realm and the different entities mm -hmm. that literally exist within those different realms. And a lot of people say, oh, that's weird or scary. But, but once you have the experience, yeah. then it'll make sense to you. Yeah, you know? and, and the word entity kind of has a bad rap, right? Yeah, you know, yeah. like it's, it's, it's looked upon as, our, as negative, but right. it, it's, it's just, it's, not, it's, it's, a, um, it's a different vibrational being in its essence, <laughs> right? You know, and that can be anything, but right. people tend in our society to say, oh, there's entities here, there's entities there. It, it tends to be like, oh, it's spirit. negative. It's, I, don't, I shouldn't even say that, like spirit. Yeah. You know, but we call it spirit. But they're just different life form on different levels of consciousness, mm -hmm. you know, um, that exist in different realms. So you're connecting with all of this that's happening simultaneously. Um, you know, it's funny to think too, like historically, just all native peoples throughout the world, especially in the ocean, I use the ocean yeah. example, um, you know, they talked about the spirits of the, of the water. You mm -hmm. know, they talked about the spirits of, you know, whether they, you know, they're going to depths to explain, to understand this phenomenon, but they respected it as, mm -hmm. as, a, as something yeah. that is in control and they respected that. They didn't understand it to the depth, certain depths, but they had enough respect to be like, okay, I respect you, I honor you, um, and I will go accordingly because I don't want to create disharmony for myself. Mm -hmm. I don't want to ruin my people, my village, my myself, and my family and friends. Yeah. So I respect that. You respect the elements. You respect nature in that sense. So Taoism is about harmonizing with nature, understanding nature, but not just the physical but nature, the nature of all things. Yeah. Nature within us, outside of us, the planet, the planets, the universe, mm -hmm. etc. And mm -hmm. harmonizing with all that. Yeah. On all different levels. Beautiful. Yeah, now, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so when, if we look at it, then where do you, you know, like one of the elements of like discussion is, is it being a true sacred or uh, like a, a sacred science, right? Mm. And so where, where does the science come into play and how is it? And, you know, like, let's just dive into that yeah, a little yeah. bit. So a lot of people don't even realize <laughs> that the yin yang symbol, mm -hmm. that's Taoist in origin. Yeah. You, you, you Google it and you Google the history of where the yin yang first appeared. Uh, it was, I believe it was BC time okay. period. I don't have exact date, um, but it's a Taoist emblem, basically depicting the nature of our 3D, three-dimensional reality. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot more to that that people don't understand. That's more of a sacred geometry mm -hmm. uh, to it. But the, the basic mundane understanding is the, obviously the polarities okay. of life. You know, uh, where we have night and day, male and female, uh, good and bad, all these masculine, feminine. Mm -hmm. The black represent is the yin. That's okay. the more the passive energy. Uh -huh. And, you know, the dark, the night within. And the yang is the white part mm -hmm. of the yin yang. Uh, it's the opposite of that. It's the out, it's out, out there in the sun. Yeah. The sun was like the sun and the moon. There's a million different polarities you can easily describe it. And then the two dots represent that even within the yin, the, mm -hmm. the center of yin, there is yang. There is the opposite. Mm -hmm. And then vice versa with the other. And obviously, as you see in the yin yang, it's, <clears throat> it's, it has a swirling motion. Yeah. Because nothing is stationary. 
Mm -hmm. And it's a circle. Nothing is square. Everything is a constant state of fluctuation of polarity where as soon as things get as good as they do, they eventually, there's this birth and death cycle that's constantly going on. Yeah. And and it's happening on on every different level. Mm -hmm. And again, it's just learning the different levels of that. Yeah. You know, and uh, what's funny too is a lot of people don't understand is because there's no way to pay attention to it. But the line in the middle uh-huh. that separates the two, but yet holds the two together. What is that? So you can say that the uh, one is like the physical world. The other is the spiritual world. Mm. But the line in the middle is the energetical world. Ah. So the, so, and that's very profound. And. But not just, for, again, from like a philosophical thing or it's a literal thing in, her spirit, in terms of the um, sacred science yeah. of it. It's what's holding it all together. Like so that. the physical, the energetical, the spiritual, the Jing, Qi, and Shen, it's uh, three major components of energy, I would mm-hmm. say, that in the Taoist tradition, we work on to piece things together. You know, okay. within ourselves and within our surrounding. So, uh-huh. I hope that explains. No, it. no, that does. <laughs> that explains a lot. Now, with with everything that we've we've been talking about, mm. you know, there seems like there's so much, and it seems like you're still diving in, and you're, you know, an ordained priest at this point, yeah. and. You know, it, it, it is this embodiment of something that you can study for your whole lifetime and, you know, still continue to expand, right? But when somebody's just first being introduced to this, let's say they come to the mm. intro or like the class that you're teaching here or um, some other class that they find themselves, like right. what type of person um, is best suited to attend that type of class and um, what can they expect to get out of it? Oh, my God. Great question. Um, Someone who, like myself, wanted answers, Mm. wanted more depth, and wanted something that really, what what I really enjoyed about Taoism, and this is just my own opinion, feelings, compared to other traditions I came across, I really liked the practicality of it, um, that there was no confusion, it was very straightforward. Okay. What see is what you get. There's no big mystery in the sense of understanding what's going on. Yeah. You know, uh, learning to do tra- the tradition and the practice and the ritual, that's a whole nother thing. But in terms of conceptualizing it, mm-hmm. it was very easy to conceptualize and to grasp. So if it resonates with you and in uh, Taoism per se, I would say read about it, study it. And if yeah. it makes sense to you, it's got to make sense to you. And if you feel it's got to be in here, Mm -hmm. you know, I tell people spirituality, it's, it's a, it's a, it's not an intellectual pursuit. Yeah. It's a whole body thing. It's a whole, it's a lifestyle. Yeah. And And you you, tried to do the intellectual pursuit of it for, and then you realized, hey, you know, like there's more to this. Because I was, I was a little skeptical myself because I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't know what was going on. I was very precautious because yeah. I didn't want to get hurt, <laughs> yeah. you know. Um, so uh, that was that's how I, I experienced it when I was younger. But it's like I said, people learn about it, study, test, be skeptical. It's good to be skeptical. This way, you can weed out what works for you and what doesn't. What it's like, mm-hmm. okay, I got it. You know, that's why at such a young age, Taoism made so much sense to me because I really I put it to the grindstone. Yeah. And I like tested it. You know, it's like, man, this it's passing all my tests. So <laughs> I think I this this is it for me. You know, but then again, Taoism may not be for other people. It, it, you pick your pick your favorite cereal yeah. in the cereal aisle and you go yeah. with it, and that's yours. What resonates with you? It's it's gotta be here. But I encourage anybody to to explore and to learn. Because, you know, I'm an ordained Taoist priest. You don't have to be an ordained Taoist priest to be a Taoist. You know, there are different levels of experience. There's different uh, experiences that people have. And there's no right or wrong way. Mm -hmm. That's that's Taoism 101. 
It's just everything is fluctuating and we all have different experiences at different times. We're all growing on different levels all the time. So there's no judgment. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it's all different. And again, we're just trying to harmonize. So whatever um, you're seeking, go for it. But you know? do you think that that's one of the biggest things that someone would get out of studying Taoism is that letting go of that judgment critical mind oh, that so yeah. many people have? Oh, yeah. Because I Absolutely. see that as being probably the number one issue that I see in, in humanity or at least Western societies is this inability to be their self for so much of their self is, is depicted the, the, the in the problem, judgment. And one of the major problems is, and I see it in our Western culture, our culture, is that we are, and I'm saying this in the general sense, a lot of folks are, and I'm not naming names or anything, are taking from traditions and they're taking what they want and leaving out what they don't want. Mm -hmm. And what that's doing is they're just taking what's convenient for them. Yeah. So what's happening, things are, be these beautiful spiritual traditions are being really watered down mm -hmm. and really stale and they're being lost because, yeah. I hate to say it, but our culture is doing that because that's how we do things, our yeah. history dictates that that's how we, we we take what we want and we get rid of what we don't want yeah unfortunately um but these traditions are not designed that way yeah and that's again going back to what i said earlier it's about protecting it and keep it safe keep it pure um because a lot when this stuff came over particularly to the united states Taoism, buddhism hinduism all these spiritual traditions when they came over and they got popular, particularly in like the 60s and whatnot, mm -hmm. it created this whole other culture, the yeah. hippie culture. Yeah. And there was a lot of drugs involved and a lot of misinterpretation because they just took it and they says, well, we can experience these great things and we can do whatever we want. But at least from the Taoist perspective, it's not intended <laughs> to be tampered with. Yeah. It's not made to be just do whatever you want with it. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's of anything, right? You know, and then if you really want the true teachings, you have to take, right? you know, the next step and the next step. Exactly. You know? So like, there's the polarity to it where it's like, it's there for you. It's accessible to you. Um, but if you are going to dive in, this is how it's going to work. The mm -hmm. rule, the, I don't want to sound so rigid, but the rules are laid out Yeah. to avoid people getting them hurt. Provoid, prov to avoid people misinterpreting it and then even perverting it and becoming things that it's not. Yeah. Um, well, then they wouldn't yeah. get the true benefit, right? You know, no, if, no, if, no. if you're taking something and like, let's say, let's go back to one of the benefits I was just saying that could <clears> be <throat> about, you know, a lot of people plagued with this worry about so much worry about whatever other people think or society or how they're viewed or you know this judgment of their self this mm. criticism with the rampant you know and that's only exploded with social media and mm. things like that everything's like this outward facing self yeah. and this pers this persona and then it's also like creates you know all of these different things from depression to anxiety to substance abuse to, you know, just yeah. on happiness, right? And, you know, so if one of the things that I'm hearing is that you can have a better understanding that there isn't right nor wrong and that this is a path and you can navigate and, and have this awareness of the ocean that your boat is going in, right? right. Um, that, you know, in order to, to get there, and to have that kind of sense of internal, like lack of judgment and just being and being able to go with that flow and have that direct direction. Um, one, you know, if you just cherry pick, you're going to get, you know, peripheral mm. stuff still and that core will not necessarily have been shifted. So exactly. And one of the things I see, you know, we, we, in our traditional education system, when and we get our high school diplomas, we get our college degrees, 
that actually does exist with the spiritual traditions traditions as well. Oh God! But it's being I mean, so, people are like you know, you know one one weekend they're becoming a Reiki master. It's like how how is that even possible? Exactly, <laughs> and, and it's ridiculous. You enjoying this so far? Did you forget to subscribe? Make sure to do so. It takes two seconds. Just press that little button, the red one. You know the one. Just press it. Little like. All right. Enjoy the rest of this content. I went to China in 2015, and I've been studying for many years. It's 2022, obviously, and I've been studying for six really or since seven, you well, since you were eight. You started studying, but within but, the but, yeah. within the lineage, yeah. So it's like I think I was like, oh my god, I think I just got my PhD, and I didn't realize, it. yeah, <laughs> you know. But that's the equivalent because if you go for a PhD, and my stepdaughter's going for a PhD mm -hmm. in psychology, she's going for her PhD for five years. Yeah. Long story short, you know, I think about it, you know, it's like Harry Potter and like Hogwarts. Yeah. That's the way things are traditionally supposed to be. They're not supposed to be these quick workshops, like you said, get your certificate in like 48 hours or weekend, and now you're a master? Yeah. To become a master traditionally, it takes a lifetime. It takes, yeah. it's, and that's the, the, the respect and the honor because it's about life. You're the student of life. Yeah. So to say that you're a master means so much more than just getting a certificate that you took 48 hours. I mean, if you get a bachelor's degree, if you get your high school diploma, you've got to go to high school for four years, right? Yeah. Traditionally. Yeah. Unless you can do it in a short amount of time. Same with getting a bachelor's degree, a master's, PhD, whatever. So my point being, if we can have that same focus, dedication, respect, and work ethic and discipline as we would for our traditional degrees and diplomas and whatnot, mm -hmm. we're going to get that much more out of it. Yeah. And what I teach, that's how I teach it. Where I came from, how I was taught, that's how it was taught to me. Because it's Taoist, it's Orthodox Taoist, mm -hmm. my lineage that comes from, and it's from thousands of years yeah. before. So, and again, it's keeping that purity, that honesty, and uh, that integrity that is so lost in our culture. And that's a big reason why I'm doing this. Mm. Because it's very easy to be like, you know, screw the world. As I'm going to do my thing, go to my cave, and blah, 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 blah. But that's another reason why, too, it is so out in the public now. Yeah. You know, it's because, again, traditionally, that's how they used to do it. They said, screw society. Yeah. Let's go to the mountain, and let's do our thing. Society, they're all zombies, for lack of better. Yeah. <laughs> they don't know what the hell they're doing. Let them be. Eventually, the, if, they're, if they want to learn, they'll come to the mountain with us. Yeah. But because everything's gotten so chaotic down here in society, is in the world, and we are doing so much harm to the world, it's like, okay, we, <laughs> we got to get off the mountain here. Well, yeah, because it, go, it, it goes back to what you folks. said in one of the things earlier is you were – saying about how, you know, you, and I'm going to use this as like, this is how you said it, but then we're going to turn it into how, how it, that's useful, right? Is that right. like you, you, you said it as like, you know, some of these traditions and, and the things that, that you're learning and the teachings are, are really powerful and you can manipulate, you know, oh uh, and shift you know, timelines and people's lives and different, you know, like not timelines, but like lives and, and different like vibrational imprints and, and karma and like you can, sh you can shift things, right? It, you know? it, it perfect. And, 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 yeah. But with that and, and how, you know, drawing that all back, <clears throat> yes. And because of the power of that, mm. you know, the, the need in today's day to have an impact on the zombies is so great, right? And it's, it's so <laughs> sad to see, I'll be very honest, people, so many people suffering from psychosis. Mm -hmm. um, being around here in, in Southern California, we have a major homeless problem. Yeah. And I, w I wasn't meaning zombies like that. But no, yes, no, no, we no, have, of course we have, not. Yeah, of course yeah, not. Yeah. Um, but I can, from what I study and what I practice and whatnot, I can see that it's not just a mechanical, chemical problem that's the end result yeah. it's an energetical in its root and then it manifests over time to a physical psychological what have you problem yeah but if 
I guarantee you, you take these, these folks that are suffering so much <clears throat> and they're talking to nothing, to the air. If they practiced what I practiced, th that, could, that would be gone mm. because it's, it's reversing it energetically. It's, it's, it's tackling the problem from, an ener from cutting the root, getting to the root yeah. to cut the problem out. Um, a lot of these folks, and I'm not just picking the homeless people, I'm, anybody. No, well, anybody. Uh, I mean, I think like the, the, the plague of psychosis the, throughout mm. all of society, whether the, you know, it's whether people have a support system to hold them up or not is whether right. they end up on the streets. But the amount of, let's say, just crazy disassociation, uh, psychosis and, 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 and that exists just in even functioning individuals, so right? So the, the, the problem is too, is because it, we learn in the uh, spiritual Taoist tradition, we have three bodies. We have our mm -hmm. physical body, we have our energetical body, and we have our spiritual body. So basically what's happening is the normal protection that a average person has, those walls are being broken down through activity that they're involved in, that's mm -hmm. destroying that. And when those walls are broken down, we are attacked by um, forces beyond logic and yeah. reason. And they're literally parasitical en entities sometimes mm -hmm. um, and forces that are naturally happening. So it's just like our immune system. It's mm -hmm. like there's germs everywhere. Yeah. But the reason why I can touch this and I'm not going to get sick, is we have an immune system. Yeah. You know, so when we do uh, Qigong, when I do Qigong and I teach it and we do these other practices, it not only is it going to boost, literally boost your immune system, but it's also going to strengthen your energetic field. Yeah. So you literally, I tell some people, they think, oh, that's not true. But it's like, yeah, I don't get sick. Yeah. Why? Because I'm constantly energetically cleaning myself. Yeah. Just like I tell people, it's like, imagine if you didn't wash your hands every day. Yeah. Or you didn't take a shower and you only did it like once a month. They, that's how it was many years ago. Yeah. And we know about the lifespans year many years ago. You you would get really dirty, you smell it, bacteria, etc. We know that. Yeah. So it's the same thing energetically, spiritually, but people aren't doing it. Yeah. People are not energetically, spiritually cleansing themselves on a regular basis. No, because they're it, not, they just develop more and more junk. It doesn't go anywhere. Yeah. So you once people understand and respect that <clears throat> There's this energy that's, that, that gives life to this meat suit, <laughs> this physical body. We respect that. We honor it. And then we take care of it. Because yeah. if we don't, it, it, energy just wants what nature of the universe wants to keep moving. Yeah. Then you cycle. It's not a square. And it doesn't stop. It keeps going. So as, as soon as we stop, the energy is more powerful than us individually. It's going to find its way to want to break through. Mm-hmm. And then when it does, it creates like uh, it creates problems. So that's why I tell people, I, I'll be like, uh, I was telling my wife, it says, oh, see this person, they're going to have a physical problem eventually. And I'm not getting too specific. Yeah, but you um, can see that. So you, but you what can you, see you, the energetic root. And he says, and says, and says, Nick, why do you say that? Because I can see the energetic imbalance mm. in their body. And it's going to probably happen within, uh, they're going to probably have a liver problem or a kidney problem, whatever. And she says, well... It's so cool that you can see that. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and this is a how, how they fix it. Well, they have to balance their energy. Their energy is completely out of whack. And, and then months go by and says, see, I told you this person had, uh, has like a, a liver cancer. Yeah. This person has a brain aneur aneurysm. Because it's just understanding the energy. Yeah, and well, if and it's where, not moving, and, and if it doesn't it, move, it becomes and, stagnant. And, then, and if it doesn't stagnate, it manifests physical. So that's why, like people, I see people they're incredible physical shape. I, shape. I eat incredible healthy food, but then they develop breast cancer. Yeah. They develop uh, kidney stones. They develop because the energy simply is just not flowing properly. Yeah, and it doesn't. And they have it does all it, kinds of blockages. And there's a misconception that oh, because they're physically fit and they're moving and they're strong. Yeah. But that doesn't mean anything on the energetic level. There could still right. you could you could be growing these beautiful biceps right. and having a six pack, and, and then they and, and drop down in a heart attack the next day. Your solar plexus could be like out of control, exactly. or your energy centers. Exactly, you know? exactly. And that, and you know, it's like, and I hear stories like that. I laugh to myself because I've said on other people they get 
offended. Like I'm rude and being arrogant. You know, it's a guy looks so healthy, he takes care of himself and he drops dead of a heart attack. Yeah. It's because the energy is blocking. It's just mo not moving the way it should. Um, and so one of the things that would be a solution for that for people is what you're saying, you know, so because I'm sure a lot of people are like, ah, you know, like I've been neglecting my energetic body. And, and, I, and, and, and I do that, too. Like, it. you know, we I used to be, human. you know, in, yeah. you know, and I go through these cycles where I'll be really good for a period of time and then I'll like get off my rocker and I won't be doing my energetic hygiene. Right. You know. But you feel the difference. You can end up feeling sluggish. You can end up feeling You'll this. Know. You can end up feeling like, oh, your back gets thrown out or other things happen. It's like, You'll oh, know. okay. You the know? more in tune you are and the more insensitive you are, the more heightened that experience is. So when you feel that low, it's going to be really low. Yeah. And you're not going to like it. And I hate it because it's like, oh, I know that when I make a mistake, yeah. <laughs> I really feel it. And I say, like, oh, I can't stand it. So it motivates me to really... Take that bath. So, so yeah, so this is yeah. So I mean I know one of my my tools that I use, I do I like to do salt baths. Okay. <laughs> you okay. know, like um, but you know, uh Tai Chi and Qigong, you know, mm. why are these two disciplines really helpful for that? Mm. Yeah, and but like I said, the reason why I'm emphasizing the sacred science is because people need to understand just because you do qigong doesn't mean everything's gonna be great. Yeah. You need to understand what's going on here. And you need to what's going on outside. Why? Because even though you sure a Qigong master, doesn't mean that this crazy world is not going to affect you. Yeah. You need to know the inner world and the outer world. And again, it's about that harmon harmony. Because majority of the people are, again, they're not clean. Mm. I hate to say it. I'm not trying to sound arrogant. But they're filthy. They're not just dirty. They're filthy. Yeah. They've got energetical par parasites. They have sometimes spirit entities connected to them. Uh, they have energetical imbalances all over the place. And the worst part about it is that in our society and societies of the world, we think that's normal. Yeah. Because we're totally, well, oh, you know, this person's a really, he, he's just got a really bad temper. And that's just how he is. And, you know, he got, he has stomach cancer and he loves to drink and all these things. It's just like we just accept, they accept all these things. Yeah. Now, I'm not casting judgment and saying this person's bad, this person's good. But it's like, I don't, if you can just have the understanding to pay attention to what's really going on, I don't think you choose to have stomach cancer. Yeah, and I don't think you choose That's to like, be ah. ex extremely dirty, you know, like or miserable and, you know, or like angry or if, create disharmony. Yeah, if pe people have a shower in their in their house, <laughs> you know, most yeah. people they might you, they might skip a shower here or there a day in between. But, That's okay. But but they probably <laughs> like by the third day they're probably like even if they didn't have to take a shower, even if it wasn't like you know. They'd want to just because they'd want to because they were felt like they were getting dirty. Right? Exactly. And, and yeah, and we have enough sense to be like, I just, I need to take a shower. Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter what walk of life you're in, it's like, I need to take a shower. We have that sense. But imagine if we were sensitive enough or aware enough to be like, I need to, I need to meditate. I need to do my particular exercise to shed that, that stagnant energy. Mm. But you've got to be sensitive enough. And that sense, of, how do you develop that sensitivity, that awareness? And that's what I'm teaching people, to develop that sensitivity and awareness. Because so you, too, can get an energetical shower, an energetical bath, so you can take care of yourself and rid yourself and protect yourself from spiritual and energetical parasites, yeah. energetical, energetical imbalances in your body and whatnot. Um, acupuncture mm -hmm. also is Taoist in origin. Hmm. A lot of people don't even understand that or know that. But it is a treatment. It's not going to cure you. Yeah. Because what acupuncture does is it's, you think of your body as like a grid system. Uh -huh. Well, I, I tell people, acupuncturists are like, and I'm not being disrespectful, acupuncturists are like energetical plumbers. Okay. Where there's a clog in the pipe between here and here. The plumber will go in there and they'll remove the clog so the water can continue to move slowly, mm -hmm. continue to flow. That's exactly what they do with the, the, the little needles. Yeah. The body's like a grid system. And then energy's flowing all over the place like a highway system. Yeah. And at certain points, there's like an accident, yeah. car accident, and it creates a blockage. 
So the acupuncturist will go in there and remove that blockage so the energy can continue to flow. Now, again, that's a treatment. Yeah. But if you're what's not doing that, what's causing the blockage? Over what's causing the blockage is you know you. <laughs> so if you're not taking care of yourself and doing that, that blockage is going to manifest again. Mm -hmm. So you've that's what I'm saying. It's 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 wonderful and beautiful what acupuncturists do. It it's great, and I know a lot that practice and do it. But I I just learned it's like if people can learn to take care of themselves, you don't got to worry about anything. Yeah. You know, literally. And yeah. you know, what's really cool too is, particularly with Taoists, and I encourage people to, to uh, Google it, Taoists historically were famous for being masters of longevity. Mm. So there are countless uh, stories of these Taoist masters that would live 100, 200 years old. In even, not just modern times, we're talking generations when it was like 30 40 year old lifespan oh exactly yeah. so that went like in the middle ages when the average lifespan uh was probably around 40 or something yeah. like that maybe 50 they're living two three times that age why because they're taking their energy they're constantly getting an oil change i tell yeah. people with like their vehicle you're constantly uh cleansing themselves and regenerating themselves so their body they're slowing down the aging process literally mm -hmm. And they're refueling their system, their blood, their bones, their organs. Mm -hmm. Everything is just total. It's recharging your batteries. And if that's all that you do, yeah, yeah you're going to live a hell of a lot longer, you know, because you're just, you're, you're operating at such a higher level yeah. than, than the average mundane person. But that's why, too, uh, traditionally, the Taoist masters would go to the mountains because they wanted to get away from the toxicity of the mundane society mm. because there's just so much. I mean, literally too, uh, in terms of like, um, you know, poisons in the air and the food and stuff like that. When you're on a mountain, there's no real, you're thousands of feet up, there's no air pollution. There's yeah. no, the, the, everything is cleaner, pure. The food grows, uh, more organic it's everything is fresh it's not touched by anybody so yeah. everything is like as pure and as organic as you can possibly get yeah you know on a whole nother level and then if you're practicing all this other stuff plus you're just living your mundane life in that serenity you yeah, can't yeah. help but to just be super super healthy internally and externally you yeah know? so uh and that's why they were also i'd say famous for longevity but famous for doing supernatural feats because uh that's they're just they're breaking through the limitations of the three-dimensional reality mm. you know and that's why you've probably heard and you know not just with the Taoist tradition but obviously buddhist tradition and other spiritual traditions these masters they could levitate yeah you know um they could do incredible supernatural experiences and a lot of them think it's like oh it's silly and stuff like that because it's like we don't see people doing stuff like that but you got to understand too. The reason why they're not like, "Hey, look at me," is because they all they work on themselves so much. It's not about ego. Yeah. They're not like, "Hey, look what I can do." It's not yeah. some circus routine, and like, look how cool I am. I can just go like that, and I can move objects. Yeah. It's not some Star Wars Jedi thing. You know, it's it's not silly. It's nothing to take lightly, and they have no ego, so they have no intention to display it to show it off show it off they don't yeah but they can do it and you can do it too and that's and there's a lot of things that i teach people how to activate those things and they're not so like oh my god that's incredible they're it's really not that profound you just need to have again the discipline yeah and the understanding of what's going on and you'd be like man this is so easy wow that's so cool it, but it's just you have to you get you have to get through the limitations that you have in our just normal walk of life where they say first of all they just say it doesn't exist it can't exist it can't happen mm -hmm. you know so you have these uh these norms and these cultural belief systems belief systems and the way you're raised and blah 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 blah, blah. so many things that you're conditioned so 
one of the things for more for my more serious uh, students um, that really want to do this is one of the first things we do is um, called soul retrieval. Okay. And what that basically is is that you're removing the imprinting from your family, your parents, mm. your basically all the attachments that you have. Yeah. Your ex lovers or your current lovers. Uh, because they all imprint on you energetically, yeah. spiritually, and, and your cell, cell block memory, too. Yeah. It's all imprinted on you and how you, you go about your, your life. But we, because we have so many different imprint, imprints on our, our, our being, that we create different versions of ourselves. Yeah. It's like a lot of people act certain way Ways around so well. certain people and certain activities. Why? Because for survival, we have to. Yeah. We have to adapt. And it starts out, oftentimes those mechanisms get brought about when you're yay big, you know. Of course, from, you see, from our parents. You see and one parent's a little bit more lax, <clears throat> the other was more strict. Around the lax right. person, you try to get away with things. The strict person, parent walks in the room and you're like, you exactly. know. Exactly. Like, and, and there's no, again, there's no judgment on it. There's, my parents were lovely, wonderful people. I love them to death, of course. And I get along with them great. But they raised me the way that they raised me that they knew how to because yeah. that's them. And that's beautiful and that's okay. But in terms of do, you know, being able to do what I'm talking about, you need to identify these attachments and these conditions. And you need to literally rid of it like shedding a layer of skin. Yeah. Because they're energetical imprints on us. Because it's like we are learning those things because that's from my dad. Yeah. That's from my mom. That's from my brother, sister, so forth. Um, and that's not your true self. That's not who you truly are. So we, in the Taoist tradition too, we have, we identify as having a lower self and a higher self. Yeah. The lower self is focused basically on just survival. Yeah. The higher self is all about connecting the divine, the Tao, whatnot, to God. And through Taoism, we learn, again, that we have to respect both processes. Why? Because we're a human being. Yeah. And we need to survive. So Taoism is, is what's really cool about Taoism, and I love about Taoism too, it's, it's a great tool to use to navigate for survival mm -hmm. and to connecting to the spirit realm. And as a... And learning about all this other stuff I'm talking about, the energetical stuff. Kind of like it's the yin-yang again. <laughs> exactly. So you're learning everything. How to survive physically, energetically, and spiritually. And how to connect and harmonize with everything physically, energetically, spiritually. So we never leave anything out. Everything is accounted for. Yeah. And we always ho hold ourselves to the highest uh, respect and, and, and to honor that. Yeah. And you have to be very grounded and very rooted. The problem is, too, there's a lot of spiritual traditions, and I won't name any. They're so focused on cultivation and so much on going up. Yeah. And I tell people, I see them all the time. They're like a balloon with no string. What happens? It flows away. And, yeah, they're, no. and they're out of their body. And, and that's what one happens? of the biggest problems I see when people like dive into, you know, a spiritual path is they, they have that connection <clears throat> to the higher realm in ways that they haven't and this expansion There's of consciousness. No and, and then all of a sudden they, they're not paying attention to their responsibilities. They lose their job. Their relationships go out the window. They don't know yeah. how to pay their bills. And it's like, yeah. Hey, you're, you're still, you, if you were just going to have a spiritual experience, you'd have one, but right. you're, you're here too, you know? <laughs> exactly. And, and, and again, physical, energetical, spiritual, <laughs> that should be teaching you to be grounded. Yeah. So in Taoism, we really focus on absorbing energy from the earth mm -hmm. and from the heavens, as we say. Yeah. And we're in the middle. The human being is in the middle. So we literally do practices to literally absorb essence from the earth and from the heavens, not just above and not just below. Mm -hmm. And you can tell just you, you walk around different businesses, you're going to see different people that are very grounded. Mm -hmm. And they're like totally oblivious to spiritual connection. Yeah. And then you see other people that are complete opposite. Yeah. And then being in this field, I come across a lot of folks that are out to lunch, so to speak. Oh, and yeah. they're, they're out of their bodies. But one of the problems that happens with that, in my experience, 
again, is the psychosis. I, 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 love, I, love, I love your, like, you know, just down to worth terminology, too. You know, yeah. like, you know, the way that you look at things. You know, they're just out to lunch or they're out to, you know. That's like, how I, yeah. But I mean, that's how you got to be. I mean, you got to yeah, be yeah. relatable, too, oh, right? Absolutely. You know? I, can, I, I keep it real. Yeah. You know, so I don't they, sugarcoat stuff because, again, it's complete reality. It's about understanding the way things are. You can't sugarcoat things. That's why, again, people are taking what they want and getting rid of what they don't want because they want it to be convenient for themselves. I want to go, for example, I want to go to yoga because I want to get a get a really good workout and to get a develop a really nice six pack. Mm -hmm. They don't care about all the woo woo stuff, and I literally hear that, and this the the incredible spiritual tradition that that's what it was for. Yeah. It wasn't for you to just work on your six-pack and wait, lose 10 pounds. Yeah. Now, if you do that, fantastic. But there's so much more. Yeah. And it's unfortunate that it's being lost and disrespected because yoga is being stretched out in like 10,000 different ways. Yeah. Because people are trying to find creative ways to, I hate to say it, even make a buck. Mm -hmm. And like you said, people are getting certified to be a yoga instructor like that. Yeah. But they're, they... And I've met a lot of folks that's like, I don't, I'm sorry, and I'm not, I won't tell them to face, but I don't see the master in this person. Yeah. I don't see the tradition. I don't see the years, you know. But then I was like, then you, you think like someone with a PhD or a master's degree, and they're talking about their, their expertise, whether it's engineering or whatever it is. They're, they're, they're an engineer. They went to school for four, eight years, 12 years, or a doctor mm -hmm. in the medical Western medical field, they're masters at their craft. Yeah. They could not be, you don't want a surgeon with a 48 hour, 48 hour master's degree taken out getting a, getting yeah. a kidney transplant. It's ridiculous. Yeah. We should have that same respect for our spiritual traditions. And unfortunately, it's not there, generally speaking. Yeah. It's there, and I'm trying to, <laughs> that's why I'm on my high horse right now. I'm trying to say, it's there, here I am. Uh, but I would love to see it in all the traditions. Yeah. You know, and uh, but that's one thing I'm really passionate about. Um, you know, Taoism is is my you know my passion. It's my path. And if 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 you if you feel that yeah. Taoism works for you, and you want that real truth, that real complete reality, I will provide that for you. That's my, as my goal is to give you all the tools that you need to be the best version of you. Mm. You know, it's not about me. No, it's about you and you being the best that you possibly can be yeah. to whatever expect expectations you want to be. I love you know, that. The sky is the limit, but you got to do the work. Yeah. And a lot of people don't want to do the work. No. <laughs> no wait, wait, wait. You know, but some people do. And the more that you realize that you do want to do the work, you know, and sometimes people want to cut the corners and they realize that they don't get the results. It's like the people that want to like save an extra buck and they buy the cheap uh, item at like the 99 cent store and they realize that it breaks right away. And then they're like, okay, maybe I do need to spend the $10 on that dollar item right. that I got, you know, you know because it, it's, a, it's, it's like, they, you do it a few times and you say, you know, on some things it works, you know, cutting those corners or getting the saving the buck or whatever the case mm. may be. Right. Yeah. And that metaphor. But, you know, it, it doesn't take long before that, that one item that breaks a few times that you you got super cheaply that you realize, you know what, buy the quality one. Right. Or you don't get that lesson. You got that, that, that quick fix, but it didn't really fix it. And the problem's still there, yeah. you know. It, it was just, it was just spray paint that like, you know, it, but it washed away, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and so it's like, okay, maybe I want to go through the step of actually seeing what work I need to do to really make that change inside of myself or the, or, or, or that awareness of my life that I want that, you know, because mm -hmm. these other things haven't provided that as short as they might be is the shortcut that they might've uh, given me, you know? And then, and then people change. I, I do, yeah. I do think that you know sometimes it takes a while. People, you know, spiral <laughs> like this to get there. I, yeah, it's funny. I joke with one of my students. I say, it's you know what it reminds me of. It's like going being in college and you have an opportunity to take all these different electives, mm -hmm. different courses. You're like, oh, this sounds so cool. You see the 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 title of the course. Oh, it's so cool. And then you go, you sign up for the class, and you go on the first day of class. You're excited. 
And then the teacher passes out the syllabus saying, <laughs> this is all the stuff that you have to do. And you're like, what, are you serious? I didn't sign up for this. And it's really intense and you gotta do all these things. And then what do people do? They get intimidated, it's like, then they drop out. Yeah. And I see a lot of people doing that. Again, it's going back to the work thing. People are so love, because uh, the information is so accessible through YouTube and everything to see visual, social media, obviously, to see what these magical feats are, you know, and mm -hmm. be able to read it. But they're not willing to put the work in <laughs> to, to, to get from, from level one to level yeah. to that. And, uh, and again, it's our cultural thing. We're, we're used to just getting the quick fix. And it's like, if I just do certain things, I can find a way to, to make it work for me. Yeah. You know, you, you can't, it, it, it's a, and again, uh, that generation uh, or cultural thing where it's like, we want it now, we want it now. Yeah. No, being patience and perseverance is a key factor with development. You know, and it also makes it more like the reward becomes sweeter at the end of the Absolutely. day, uh, you know, like, you know, I mean, I th like think about like, you know, and, and nothing to get, I get that there's medical uh, reasons for it and can it serve some people's purpose and stuff like that. But let's mm. look at like weight loss, for instance, some people yeah. can go like get liposuction or they do these other like, you know, things where it's literally cutting the fat out of them and, and, you know, <laughs> getting their stapled, you their know, stomach stapled, you know, you and, know and, and, and again, it, I'm not, nothing if this, if this, you know, if you're in that position where that needs to be the step that you need to take to put you back into alignment or whatnot, or if there's a cause for it, there, there's, there's medical um, situations where all of that is applicable, but mm. for so many, it is the quick solution. Right. Yeah, and yeah. so it's like, Okay, well, in you know, in this surgery, I can go under this knife or get lipoed and get vacuumed out, literally, and then I can wake up and I'm literally a hundred pounds lighter, right? And and yeah. you know, but what happens is that if things didn't change, which goes back to the you know, or you know, maybe they're happy and satisfied from that, but they didn't do it on their own, right? And they maybe they and maybe they keep it off. Maybe they yeah. don't keep it off. And maybe they end up going through a couple more things. But if they do it their self and there's like this reward of satisfaction, there's this yeah. like, I earned this. They I, learned. I went through this. I learned. I mastered they, my health. I mastered yeah. my body. I went through the effort. You know, I walked every day or I shifted the things. I changed certain addictions. There's you know? growth. They're growing an, an adding dimension to their being. Yeah. You know? and, the, and, the, and, <clears throat> and when you look at that, the comparable, even if the end result is exactly the same, like two people losing 100 pounds, right? Mm. Like the one has this, <clears throat> yeah, like internal growth, this development, this awareness, this, this sense of confidence and mastery and of of their self and their body and, and their life and this pride. Mm. And this person over here doesn't have those elements, yep. right? And so, you know, even if the result is the same, the energy and where you're at at that end result will be very different. Right, absolutely. That's a great point. And, you know, it's, you're going to get so much more out of it if you put the time and effort into it. You're going to grow and you're going to experience. You're going to develop experience, which you need to have. Yeah. It's a learning process and you just gain so much. The problem is, too, it's like you get the quick fix, but you're not really learning anything. So you're not going to be satisfied. Yeah. That hunger, because you got it, that means you're just going to want it again in some other facet of your life. Yeah. You know, I don't think I'm good looking enough. So I'm going to get this specific uh, type of plastic surgery. Plastic surgery, and then I'm going to do that. But then I'm going to do this. It just keeps feeding, feeding, because you're never satisfied. Why are you not satisfied? Because you're not fulfilling your satisfaction. Yeah. They don't understand what's going on. Yeah. Because they're just so focused on just getting what they want. It's so ego based, selfish that it's they're not understanding. The bigger picture and yeah. how it is affecting them and, and, on and that, it backfires 
And, and on that too is, you know, you made a comment about how somebody gets that, that class and they get that syllabus and you see it all too often and they like, ah, you know, this isn't what I signed up for. Right. And there's this perception of that this is hard work or it's going to be difficult. Yeah. But, you know, that's all an illusion in your mind anyways, right? Exactly, you know, like, exactly. Like, I mean, so the, the, I mean, the same happens for, like, a, I mean, for those that are watching. If you've ever had, like, like a whole bunch of laundry that just piles up. And it's like, you know, you create this illusion <laughs> yeah. in your mind that, um, oh, my God, it's such hard work. It's, all, it's all this laundry. <laughs> yeah. And I don't want to do it. You know, so I'm going to put it off and put it off. And the pile gets bigger and bigger. But then when you finally actually do it. You realize that it's really hardly any work, you know, like it's it's actually not that difficult. You might be separating the whites and the colors, but <laughs> you're taking and you're throwing it in a machine and pouring some fabric softener and pressing a button. Right, like, right, right. I mean, like literally Putting how different, difficult is yeah. that? But our perception and I, I'll I'll be, you know, I'll own this. I've been there. I've done the same thing, even with laundry or dishes or something. But the actual process of doing anything is the experience is the experience and it's not that difficult it's and the, our and mind the perfect that makes example it. of that you know again i share all these fun stories with my students but uh there's an old story where there's this guy he, he he's like i want to be a it was a buddhist thing i want to be a buddhist monk and i want to learn from the, the greatest teachers i'm committing, committing myself to go to the temple so he goes to the temple goes to the door and he says i want to be a buddhist I want to, you know, worship. I want to. I want to be a master, and, and I want. I want the training. He says, "Okay, okay." We let. They let him in. He says, "Okay, what do we do?" First thing he does, he gives this guy. He gives him a mop, and a bucket, and he starts mopping the floor. And he's like, "I came here to be a monk. What am I mopping the floor for? This is this is your training. This is this is step one. Yeah. This is where it begins." Because everything that you are, your character, who you are, will be exposed and expressed when you whopping the floor. And it's all about hard work and understanding. Again, that the reality check of you are a human being mm -hmm. and the nature of accepting our nature as a human being. Yeah. That we grow, we age, we decay, we die. We have ups and downs. Nothing is, is like that. Everything's in fluctuation. So you have to learn these different aspects of yourself in order for things to go the way that you want them to. You have to accept reality. Yeah. And you have to accept things in the depth of acceptance through experience. Yeah. And that comes through doing the work. <clears throat> and that's why, like, lesson one, mop the floor. Yeah. You know, it is <laughs> the Karate Kid movie. Yeah, I was just going to say that. You know, the wax. So he's like, why are you teaching me to wax, wax the car? Off, you know, more. It's the whole, he, says, he says, no, you just keep doing it. What the, why am I, I wax all these cars. Why am I doing that? Because through that, not only is he teaching the technique of waxing on to block punches, because that's what he was doing. Yeah. But he was teaching him acceptance and self-discipline and hard work. And through that, you're learning in those moments to accept yourself. Mm -hmm. Because when you want to check out, I hate doing this, we do something else. Yeah. Oh, I need a drink. I need to eat something. I need to go relax. And, 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 and that's fine to do things because at times we do need to relax, of course. But when we escape the moment, when we need the moment, that becomes a problem. Yeah. When we're learning our lessons, <clears throat> we need to focus and accept it and study. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of technique in, in, in what I teach and what I practice where um, we hold stances and postures so we can overcome our physical limitation in order to break through that yeah. to get to, so we can get to the more subtle aspects of ourselves. But the only way you can get through that is through the self-discipline and learning the proper technique to quiet the mind and in the body and the body too to overcome the physical limitation yeah so that's why you i don't know if you may have seen like the shaolin monks you've heard of the shaolin monks mm -hmm. okay they're practicing something called hard qigong okay it's qigong it's energy practice hard because they're doing physical activity to overcome the physical 
limitation. Uh. So they, they have a strict discipline where the energetical self takes over mm -hmm. and they compact that energy in certain parts of their body to, to break through the physical. Yeah. So that's how I seen it was some cool video on uh, YouTube, uh, like a 10, he looks like he was eight or 10 years old, really mm -hmm. little, he weighed about, looked like he soaking wet, 80 pounds. Yeah. But he would take rebars and break it over his forehead. Yeah. You know, or take like a sledgehammer and break it over another little kid's monk uh, body. It's not a trick. It's just that they're learning the specific technique to, to accumulate the energy in certain parts of their body. So it's becomes super strong, super yeah. powerful. Um, and they can take, overcome physical limitation. Yeah. But you can do that for your physical self. You can do that for your energetical self and you can do it for your spiritual self. Yeah. You can develop that energy in different aspects of your being to do overcome the mundane physical activity. So in other words, I said that, okay, that's a physical example of overcoming your physical self. Yeah. But you can overcome, it's like saying that, um, okay, I'm looking right now, I don't see any spirits. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't hear anything. But if you do the particular specific type of training mm -hmm. and you do it hard enough and you do it focused enough and disciplined, you will be able to hear, see, smell, taste, et cetera, et cetera. You will be able to do these things. Yeah. But it requires discipline. Yeah. It requires focus and it requires soul retrieval. It requires all these things from you in order to break through the basic shell of you. Yeah. And a lot of people don't want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why they realize, well, that's, um, you know, I don't want to do that. I just, I think it's cool. Oh, you can see spirits and ghosts and all that stuff. And, but then I tell them what you got to do to do it. And I, oh, I don't want to do it. It's too much work. Yeah. <laughs> but, but it's cool though. But when it doesn't feel like uh, well, it's too much work or when the desire and the, or the calling or that feeling inside does propel you, that's yeah. when they should come and see you, Nicholas. And, yeah. you know, you're yep. going to be here. And I know that you do other teachings and trainings and mm. that, you know, you're located in Glendale. Yeah. And so... Um, do you do things on uh, over Zoom and Skype? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, <laughs> yeah, of course. I mean, most people have because of the pandemic. But I want to make yeah, sure that, you know. Yeah, that propels so, like, a lot of that. But yeah, I be I teach people on the East Coast. Okay. Um, because I have a lot. Of, being from the East Coast, I have a lot of friends and family over there, and I'm always doing Zoom stuff. Yeah. And uh, doing training. Um, because again, it doesn't matter if <clears throat> it's, you could be anywhere in the world. Yeah. Because when you break through again the physical mundane, you can connect with people. In yeah. the different part of the world, you can. It's not that difficult, and the, the average person be like, "Oh, that sounds mm, no. crazy." It's really not. Um, so you can be anywhere. Mm -hmm. But yeah, of course, I teach. I teach that way, and um, because it's about what you're doing <laughs> in, in your world. So it doesn't yeah. matter if you're two feet away from me or two thousand miles away from me. What you're doing is your choice. You know, I don't have anything to do with it. I'm just the messenger, so yeah. to speak. You know, I'm just the coach, the teacher, the instructor, but you're doing all the work. Yeah. And it's my job, my desire to just provide that for you and see you evolve, to see you grow and applaud you and celebrate it with you and share it because that's just a cool thing. That's awesome. You know? Yeah. So where can people find you? Oh, well, um, social media, um, Evolve Zero Now on Instagram. Okay. And on uh, evolve Now on Facebook. I, I'm guilty for, for not being as active as I should on, on social media, but that's something I need to work on. And I'm, yeah. I'm trying to be out there more and do more of it. You're cultivating that energy yes. inside to use that energy yes. to remove those blocks in the physical. Exactly. <laughs> it's true. And, uh, you know, it's something I, I need to work on. We always need different things to work well, on. Of course. And otherwise, why no... would we be here? Yeah, exactly. And then, you know, like, and that's a, it's beautiful, though, because it doesn't matter where somebody is and how high, how high level any type of master or teacher is. They're still in an evolutionary cycle, their self in a growth cycle. You know, the redwood doesn't stop growing just because it might be the tallest tree in the forest. Exactly. It's just growing to the next level. And that's a beautiful thing. And it's like. Uh, that's what I said early on, too. It's like we're all growing at different levels. Yeah. And there's no judgment in that. And there's no right or wrong about it. Because if you want to look at it this way, too, one one time I was in that position. Yeah. And you were a seedling. 
Right. You know, exactly. and then maybe you're a redwood now, but the the redwood had to start out as a seedling. Exactly. And you know, I, I used to always say when I was younger, man, I wish it would be so cool if one day I could be able to teach people at such a at their if they're at a young age experience what I'm experiencing because I had no teacher when I was young, yeah. and I dreamed about it, and now I'm doing that oh, because I want to. I want to help young people because I always, that motivated me. One of the motivations I had to, to do this now is because I, I see so many people suffering, especially young people. Yeah. Because they don't have an outlet mm -hmm. or the resulting to doing things as an outlet that are just self-destructive. Yeah. And the toxicity has increased right. rapidly. And they're, they're depending on substances um, outside of themselves for that as a spiritual connection. Yeah. As a way to get to it's like no 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 guess what you don't have to do any of that you don't have to pay for anything you don't have to uh you don't have to do all this attachment stuff you can just learn a little something and you be do profound stuff you need you don't need to be dependent mm -hmm. that's the key word dependent on people or even su substances outside of yourself yeah. once you learn yourself and accept yourself you understand that you are the supercomputer and yeah. you're just plugging away and you're programming yourself and you can do infinite in yeah. sky's the limit. And that's what I want to encourage people. And, but I said again, uh, young people specifically, because why? Because young people, they're so vulnerable and they have, they, they're so pure because they just literally haven't lived enough. Yeah. So th they, their energy is healthier and they're stronger just because the, physically they're younger. Yeah. So if we can get it when that, in that stage, oh man, they can do incredible things. Yeah. Because it's much harder when you're older, by fact, when we have, again, so much more garbage. You have we, a lot more clearing there. You oh, can just yeah. do a building of energy right. and an expansion mm -hmm. with a little bit of clearing, whereas the older somebody gets and you know everything else that is you, yeah. have to, you have to spend how much of the time clearing to even get to the expansion of energy exactly exactly and that's no but does it don't don't get no. it discouraged no, you can no. still get the clearing no, no. so you can get the expansion <laughs> and do some really cool stuff and yeah. also just really you know have a, a roundabout more peace ease yeah. happiness you know a uh, deeper connection to all of the other realms that are available mm -hmm. to us through this and, and grow, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and yeah, it doesn't matter what walk of life you come from. I mean, I work with people that are, it's so funny because it's like you work, I work with some people, they're so successful and they're so good at what they do. But when I work with them, I completely expose them and I get to who they truly are. Mm -hmm. And they're just like a, a little child. Yeah. You know, they're not this, you know, in a different world, in a, the corporate world, they're, you know, they're very wealthy, powerful people. But in the reality, they're, 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 they're really not. They're very vulnerable, delicate, sensitive, yeah. uh, tortured in a lot of times beings. Yeah. And they're trying to figure that out because they thought that if I did X, everything was going to be great. Or if I did Y, everything was going to be great. But then they realize that it's none of that yeah because they do both of it they insight. achieve it and they're yeah. like wait yeah they're you know? so focused on external again it's the external activity whatever it is that says this is going to make things better this is going to give me fulfillment it never has it never will and it never will be it's all internal it's all within you and mm -hmm. the external is just the expression of what's going on internal yeah it's a reflection of you um in understanding that and blah 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 we touched on on that earlier about understanding the way of nature the way it works and it's like a science it's like literally understanding the science behind the energy yeah so and it's, it can be tough to navigate but that's why i'm here to help people navigate so they have their boat and they have figure out their destination, how fast they want to travel, <laughs> how they want to get there in terms of time and effort. That's and also them. knowing the ocean and being respectful. Exactly. And knowing when's a good time to go, when's a good time to anchor, 
there's a like, storm coming through. I think we should anchor now. We shouldn't go anywhere. Otherwise, we're going to get, we're going to drown. Yeah. yeah. So. Wow. Yeah. Such a pleasure, Nicholas. Cool, cool, cool. Thank you for Thank you. being here and sharing Absolutely. so much with us. Yes. I hope if this inspires anybody that you can find Nicholas, check out um, the classes that he's doing here, as well as his other ones, seeking out private mentorship mm -hmm. and learning, um, you know, don't let any limitation be, you know, wherever you are at mm. in the United States or the world, you mm. know, with technology has definitely exploded <laughs> with this pandemic. Yes. So able to reach people in a better way yeah uh for those that have uh tuned in over youtube i really appreciate a like a comment or subscribe down below it helps more people find if you're listening to this on auto uh on an audio platform whether itunes or spotify and stuff like that please come and check out our youtube and you know, uh, make a comment or like. We're really trying to get the YouTube up there a little bit more. We have a nice big following with the audio, mm. but we want to get mm. the physical so you can see us. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's like it's an extra layer of Absolutely. perception. So Absolutely. check us out. And until next time, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. If you enjoyed this conversation, please like it, subscribe, and share it with your friends. If you want to hear more about what we have going on and happening online or in, in the neighborhood, check out liberateyourself.com and sign up for our mailing list. Uh, also, follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Liberate Yourself. It's you are self, U R S E L F. Until next time, be powerful, be magical, and be free.